you get you guys are getting a subpar DG right now. Subpar, not acceptable. Welcome to the Inside Star Citizen Review. Tonight we're going to be watching uh, the episode called Firebird is the Word. We know as events are right around the corner, it is time for ships, ships, ships. It's time for ship sales. It's time to take ships previously that were meant for different roles, put different skins on them, put do make them do different things. <laughs> time to sell, time for revenue. Some people sick of it. Some people upset. Some people, all oh, they do is sell ships. This is how they make their money. This is what they've got to do to keep it going. And they got to keep people excited. Will this new, I think, I think what we got basically is like a saber raven. I, I saw, I saw some pictures in the discord of it. Let's check it out and let's see what this variant is going to do. It's that time each May where we celebrate the might and majesty of the UEE vehicle fleet. And this week we're exploring the gold standard work of one of the rarest vehicles in the game the debut of a new design sure to set the verse on fire, and a long-requested variant finally making its debut at this year's event. It's Invictus Launch Week Part 1, so let's stop yapping and get to showing. I'll be here when you get back. By the way, we're going to watch my buddy um, Subliminal. He's, he's going to do a walkthrough. At the, at the, something we haven't done before. At the end of this, we're actually going to look uh, to get a first look at it. We're going to watch Subliminal test it out. We're going to get the stats on it. Very interested. Orson, what's up, buddy? Welcome home. So the Sabre Raven was introduced at CitizenCon 2017 in Frankfurt. It was an exclusive deal with Intel. It is a EMP interdictor fighter, carries two EMP generators in its belly, has an additional computer on board for helping do data running, and is really just a cool looking chip. You can see the resemblance to the Sabre, but it is its own unique shape. Performance-wise, over the years, because of its exclusive nature, it's sort of never really peaked in terms of popularity. But the owners that have it love it, and you always see them at ship meets in the Make game. Make it more effective. Recently, we completed Gold Standard on the base Sabre, which highlighted some of the issues with the Raven itself. It's sort of been left behind in terms of art and gameplay upgrades over the years. So we set about Gold Standing in the Raven and utilizing some of the work we did on the Sabre to help benefit the Raven. <laughs> so we've recently done a, a pass on the Sabre Raven. Coop. It gets referenced a lot. Coop says it's a unique, a unique enough new hull that it won't run uh, afoul of our legal agreements with uh, Intel. I've actually got one of these. The, you know, I, I like the looks of it and all, just not really effective. This gold standard. What I think for, for me personally, the way I look at it is kind of our current standard. It's bringing a ship that we've done work on in the past and kind of ticking off all the current kind of features to make it compatible with everything we now do on our current release ships. The main pass that we needed to do on the, the Raven was to add all of its functional component base. So now, rather than it just being a, a shell and you can't really do much with it, each of the component bays now have a animating opening door. All of the components are accessible by the player. And that really What's just up, gets the vehicle one? ready for the next stage in Star Citizen gameplay. With the resource network work coming online and the ability to interact with the individual ship items, that ship is now kind of ticked off, ready, good to go. Some of the other work that was needed as a kind of byproduct of bringing it up to current day standards is well, working on the dashboard and the it. interactions on there. So now the buttons are all interactive. And really, it's just about giving some love to some of our older vehicles and bringing them up to kind of our current day standard. Yeah, well, that was a limited amount of people that got that, me being one of those. So at this Invictus, we're happy to announce that there is a new sibling to the Raven and it's called the Sabre Firebird. So the Sabre Firebird is a missile-based fighter, yeah. much like some of our other... Yeah, 
I can say I can say I feel the same. Limitless says seems a bit of low flying fruit to me. As somebody who owns a ship, you know, I'm glad they did some work on it, but it is a limited amount of people. I don't think that the work that they put into it was anything like, ooh, you know what I'm saying? I, I well, let's keep going. Let's keep going. The ships like the Tower. Be a it trades dance, pure gun power <laughs> for missile firepower. It is based okay. on the Raven chassis, but it has yeah. quite a few I've little visual tweaks that when you put them side by side, you'll notice that it is a completely yeah. different style. I've always loved the look of it. And its main firepower is from its belly mounted bespoke missile launcher, which holds 12 size 3 missiles. So in the Sabre series, we have the base Sabre, the Sabre Comet, and the Sabre Raven. And really, we wanted to kind of build on the Raven's chassis. It's a very unique design. And we really felt like we could do more than what we've currently done with that vehicle chassis. Obviously, we wanted to make sure that it feels different enough from the base Raven. So we did quite a lot of work. The actual full kind of top of the vehicle has pretty much been kind of remodeled. The main cool. spine of the vehicle has a bunch of changes on it. When we looked at it and kind of decided what is really successful and what we want to build on, we really felt like Missile the Raven is very, very Missile sleek, platform. whereas the base Sabre had these really nice kind of like tail fins and, and a nice kind of back end to it. So really we kind of want to bring a bit of that inspiration right, back right. into the Firebird. So the main kind of visual change that you'll notice on the, the rear of the vehicle, it's got a you know, slightly new this. thruster and it's got this, these nice sort of wings that complement the rear tail end. A lot of kind of more subtle changes have been done on the vehicle as well. When you kind of first look at them side by side, we really wanted it to be recognizable that it was built on the Sabre chassis. So we've kept a lot of the key shapes, but as you start to kind of like get into the details, you'll notice the wing tips are different. The kind of big cutouts have had some work done to them. And we've decided to add some extra geometry there just to kind of strengthen up the vehicle a bit as it is. I think the base Raven being like an interdiction ship, uh, really it was kind of focusing on on agility and being able to chase down targets, whereas this being slightly more kind of combat orientated, we really wanted a bit more strength in the vehicle as a whole. As you kind of go to the underside of the ship, that's where the big functionality change comes. So now in the, the belly of the ship, we've got a big missile rack, so it all opens up and then we can launch the missiles out from underneath the firebed. Compared to a lot of our other ships that have missile racks just bolted under the wings, or bespoke ones mounted into the hull that are sort of he firing forwards. This is canted at a downwards angle, so you get a really nice visual when they fire down and curve up. And also boat. we've adjusted the missile controller on it, so rather being restricted to a set amount, it can fire up to a complete row at a time, so you get to see a huge volley of row by row come out. So we have a lot of fighters in the game, but we don't have a lot that their main focus is missiles. I could mention that the Talon Shrike is pretty much the main missile-based fighter that is a, a light to medium category. So this adds another option into the mix. And it also builds on all the work we did for the Sabre Raven Gold standard to help get a brand new ship. In terms of who is the Firebird for, just like anyone who enjoys combat, this is a ship for you, especially if you prefer to sort of not engage direct in dogfights and sort of lurk on the periphery of combat and help chip away at the targets. So that's the Sabre Firebird, available at Invictus. Uh, we're looking forward to see the reception of Get it and letting a, a new generation price of backers check, experience that classic silhouette with a revitalized uh, in-game performance. Did you consider doing a Pontiac Trans Am Firebird paint for this? When we came up with the name of the Firebird, we did you know, instantly think of some vehicle inspirations, should we call it? Um, but no. Smoking and the Bandit? No, no, Smoking the Bandit. I hate you. Mutual. <laughs> Mutual. So, in the top three questions that I get, number one and two are when and where are the Bally Merchantman and Endeavour? The third one is where is my Ursa medical version? Oh, okay, I'm more. You know, wow, okay. I'm more excited about this. I think this is great for medical gameplay, it, it ties right into the medical gameplay. The Firebird, I don't know. It just sounds to me like they replaced the EMP with, like, 12 by missiles. It sounds like a spam missile boat. Missile's not even working that great anyway. And and I'm wondering what the price of the Firebird is, you know? Not, I, I can't say I'm too excited about it. This I'm more so excited about. So we're finally about. proud to present the RSI Ursa Medivac. Yeah, because that's the one they really wanted you to focus on. 
<laughs> yeah, it's gameplay, man. I mean, like, you know what's funny? I am such a nerd, man. I love this. I love anything that endorses, like, gameplay loops and people who like to focus on a genre. Like, uh, they love to be, like, medics. You know what I'm saying? I, I know I love explosions, but I guess I'm just an uber nerd, and I like this better than the Firebird. <laughs> So where are we going to use the medevac? The idea it is designed least. for use in a sort of combined arms ground assault scenario. No prices. When you kind of think about all the different gameplay loops we have and all the different you know, ways that our players like to explore the universe, yeah, you know, we have a lot of air support. Yeah, you know, we have the, the Pisces. We have you know, medbays in our big ships, but we don't really have anything that's ground vehicle based that can kind of be that response unit to really kind of get people out of trouble to come in and heal our, our players. You have people on the ground in vehicles, in gravel bikes, on foot, assaulting a location such as a distribution center. Ultimately, people get injured and killed, uh, and they don't want to respawn back at their habs or at hospitals, or even in sort of a parent mothership a long way away. You need something that can keep up with the assault, and that's where the medevac sits. It fills that gap in our, our lineup that allows the players to be able to go out, explore our universe, and have less concerns about some of the activities they're getting up to, knowing that they've got a medical vehicle on call nearby that can kind of get them out of the situation. Seraphim. Yeah, I agree with you, Eric. Exterior-wise, uh, the main kind of big difference is, is going to be the delivery. So the medivac will come with its own medical-themed default paint, as well as additional paints, and these will be applicable to the base Ursa as well. Other than that, the kind of main changes that we've, we've done is just really giving it a bit of a lift up to our current standards. So we've got proper interaction panels now for the side entrance and the rear entrance. And then the biggest change really is on the rear of the vehicle. The ramp or the, the rear door previously split in the middle and opened up, but that doesn't really make sense when you think of a medical vehicle. You want to be able to ease the transition in as, as, as easy as possible. So it's got a proper kind of rear ramp on it now. The door folds down and just allows much easier access into the rear of the vehicle. Inside, it, it's all new. It feels very clean and clinical. Our artist that, that works on it, Haddy, he's done like a fantastic job of really bringing up the kind of the level of detail, making it really feel like a purpose-built space. On the left-hand side, you've got a weapons locker that also has storage for your med guns and your utility items. We've then got a clean sink area. It feels very clinical and clean. And then as you move towards the front of the vehicle, you've got an extra seat. Looking at kind of current ambulances and medical vehicles, you generally have your patient and then somewhere for the person that is kind of doing that treatment to be. We've got the medical terminal where it allows you to treat the player or the patient. And then right at the front, we've got all the component bays and everything else that's needed for making the vehicle work. So the big feature of the RSI Ursa Medivac is, of course, the med bed in the back. It is a tier three med bed, and the way med beds work in the game is changing. Tier three, historically, did not... They're focusing a lot more on the certain niches of gameplay loops, you know, uh, especially with medical, if you've all played 323 or in the Moby Glass, you're seeing the new health layout. A lot of people saying I, I'm not really even conscious of it or using it yet. It's it's implemented. It's baby phase, and we start we're starting to see like um, additions to medical gameplay, and I think they'll build upon this. I think uh, the comment by Arcane where he says, um, I really feel the ability to respawn in any medical med uh, bed is a clear sign that death of a spaceman is coming soon. I think death of a spaceman, they might implement something of that nature. And death of a spaceman for who's not aware of that uh, loop that, that was planned since the dawn of time in Star Citizen is essentially being... Um, what do I want to say? Conscious of your decisions in games so that there is a, a, a serious effect to your character when you die. When you come back, there's there's loss of, you know, there there's an there's an effect, there's a consequence to your actions. You come back as a family member. If you're if you're beyond repair, 
if you're beyond repair, we're not really, we, we don't have that right now, but essentially you, your body has wear and tear and your character just goes kaput eventually. The, the whole theory behind death of a spaceman is that because of this and because the fact that all the assets that you accrue will then be passed down to your next character, a.k.a. family member, somebody that you make up within your own, you know, narrative, that you will be more conscious of your decisions. I don't think that that's going to be implemented until the following server meshing uh, tech gets flushed out. The persistence is in, you know, these types of things, Arcane. But, yeah, they might, you know, they might be getting closer to that through this medical gameplay loop that they're going to continually push, right? As we've seen with the introduction of engineering, you know, there's you're, you're starting to see a push towards these loops that we've been waiting for for a while, all the... And, and that's nice. That's good. It's going to get messy. It's going to get really, really messy as we continue forward because they're going to push these on us. And a lot of people are, are, are not going to like some of the changes coming down the pipe. But I think over time, it, it's a positive thing because we can shape them the way we want through the voice of uh, the citizens. You know, so interesting. I like that you said that. I like not that. allow, allow respawn, respawn on them. On them. We're, changing We're changing that to, to allow, allow respawn, respawn, but, but at a, a much, much reduced dis distance from the vehicle. So you really, really need to keep this vehicle up with, with the attack, attack to, to get the maximum, maximum use out of it. Out of it. We took, we took a lot, a lot of inspiration, inspiration from, from some of our other kind of methods, methods on our, on our other vehicles, vehicles. and Thank generally, you. yeah, we just try to think about if you're trying to treat someone that's been injured, what do you need, what, what's, what's available for you? Obviously, we looked at ambulances and real-life inspiration. Um, Esteban, welcome. First time chatter. Is it just me or the EU servers are all down? Welcome to Star Citizen, man. Anytime patches are released, it's messy. I've been playing off and on now for the past week. It's a mess. It's, a, it's an absolute mess right now. This is pretty normal, though, when we get the patch. That change is not exclusive to the Medivac. That is an across-the-board change. So ships such as the C8R Pisces and Cutlass Red will also benefit from that. But, of course, those are much larger welcome, targets buddy. in a combat scenario. So you would want to keep them a little bit further away. So that's the Ursa Medivac. It is a great support vehicle for ground vehicle players, uh, and especially uh, those who want to support other more hostile fence. engagements. I'm on the fence and I didn't mean space. to imply that we picked this over doing the Merchantman or the Endeavor, but a, a lot of people ask me this every single event in Reddit Spectrum. So where's the Medivac? So it's here now. Last sequence complete. It seems fairly shallow the more. So I what did we learn this it. week? Well, we learned that the Sabre Raven finally gets a little of the love and attention it's needed for some time. That the Sabre Firebird is here with a host of missile-laden destruction alongside with it. And that the Ursa Medivac is rolling up with a fantastic change to how medbeds work and new liveries for all Ursas to enjoy. Now, don't forget to tune into this year's Invictus All Vehicles Roundtable tomorrow, where we'll have some of the folks that make ships possible on to discuss all aspects of vehicle life in the verse and then come on back next week for Invictus Part 2 for even more new vehicle goodness. For Inside Star, Star, Star Citizen. Citizen. Oh my goodness. Eric, you are the man. Ten Sundays. Thank you, bro. Feeding my family. Next time, it's going to be glass. He's feeding my family. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be watching the actual specs of the Firebird with my buddy Subliminal here in a second. But thank you, Eric, for that 10 sub gifts, man. He's a saint. He does, and he feeds my family as well. <laughs> now let's go hop in here, check out subliminal first look at the Firebird here. Again, I am not very excited for this. This is kind of what they do towards this time of the year. You know, they just slap new paint on it, redesign it slightly, and make it do something different to get that extra revenue, which I understand. Uh, some people say, oh, here it comes. You know, they're going to shove these down our throat. You know, it, it just depends upon whether it's your jam or not. You know, some people might just really like this. Me, not super excited about this. Thank you, Arcane, for that. Um, more for the Rover, really. Thanks, Wuxie. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Good to see you. So let's see what Subliminal says here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So, huh. Can I put some extra guns like that under my Raven? <laughs> Those look like, um, 
Well, they can only be size three Gatlings, the GT 220s, I believe. Because the next step up don't is the Revenant. Don't be sorry, Whoopsie, it's okay, like buddy. Ooh, it's sexy. How's everybody doing tonight? Um, Thanks for being here live with us. Let's 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 take it slow. Let's take it slow. Let's go higher up. Let's kind of look down on it a little bit. Oh, oh, oh. All right. I mean, I've always loved the looks of it. I'm not a big fan of the color, but that can be fixed with the skin. Yeah. Yep. So I have a video coming out. It'll it'll probably come out after this because I think this video is more important. I'm glad you I did, have a video Steve. where I showed that the Saber Raven has gold standard now. So the detail, the level of detail that you see here is now also on the Raven. That honeycomb is one of the most noticeable things. It's this is going to be gold standard. The, you should be able to access the components from the top. All except that the missiles don't work. <laughs> oh, I like that Saber logo. I do too. Ooh. Let's go. Never seen that before. Uh, whatever this is on the tail might be a little bit. Oh, it's the Firebird. Saber firebird boys it's got a little oh i thought that was like a phoenix logo or something on it all right let's take a look let's go try to go up top high up okay well we've seen that let's let's fast forward a little let's bit here print this then put up the component drawers there in the middle too yep let's see if i can get like a First off, hey, right there. I'm trying to get a price on this thing, anyway, any which way. I don't I can. even see where missiles are supposed to come out of this thing. Uh, it's the the uh, under the cockpit, isn't I it? I guess from underneath. Yeah. Let's go ahead and look underneath while we're waiting on that person to get out. This is under here. They just have maybe a missile pod thing will pop out or something. We're waiting on that guy to get out. Let's already. Okay. Here's so we have a shimmer, here. two shimmers, which I'm pretty sure is on the Saber Raven already. Uh, two chargers, two bracers and a drift. And two Mantis GT 220s with 12 Thunderbolt threes. Okay. It's, it, okay. So it, it's basically a Saber Raven, right? With What's torpedoes. It's got the same max speed as the Saber Raven. Same SCM speed, I believe. You can compare two ships. Look at that. No difference at all in um, any of these metrics between the, the Saber the Raven, Raven and the, the Comet, Saber Firebird. Imagine. Let's do, we'll do Saber Comet. Comet. Yeah, yes, there's no difference there. There's gotta be a difference there, right? 206 meters per second. So it's a little bit slower, mm -hmm. uh, slower on the, the top speed. I can't say I'm Which that makes impressed. Sense. The Saber Raven should be pretty quick. Kind of surprised that the bomber variant is quick. What's, uh, max but you never speed know. That could probably definitely change this goes live. Probably Hull HP. Let's check the hull HP. The same across the board. Okay. All right. Well, um, that's really pretty much it there. Let's we, we can take a look at these. That's if they hit. That's if they hit. So you have the twenty nine fifty. Wait a minute. Oh, really? Hold on. I love, so you can put the I love when Sub does this skin on here. That's why I love him, man. He's, I didn't he's think very he'd be thorough. able to do that. Very thorough, dude. A friend Ash of the Cloud, channel. Landslide, Polar Camo. I think I own that one. I didn't know you could put those on the Saber. At, let me know that's, in chat if you can really point, do that. Or if, you know, it's a bunch of missile uh, spamming. You got to be up on top. You know what I mean, Limitless? I'm pretty sure this is real, though. Usually, Urkel takes game data from the game. So things can be wrong if the if he is misinterpreting it, but if, <laughs> yeah, sketch. Yeah, if we're going through the details up in here, after the uh, inside star anyway, citizen. I just want to check so out yeah, these so stats. So those are the skins that will be available for the Firebird. I got, I forgot to hop in inside. here, give a little test spin. I'm just curious. Okay, I'm so still not I, impressed. I can already tell because I was just in the Saber Raven that. The difference here is the color of if they, the if they lights hit, behind whoopsie. the buttons. 
They are blue. Yeah. He's really good at that, Eric. You're in the right. Saber Raven. It's like the, just like those buttons there, but all the way around. Let's take a look at, at it from the top here. Good evening, Stunner. So great to see you here, man. All right. Let's fly I this baby here, sub. And uh, and then that's the outside. I'm going to go ahead and hop the spin around. As Traven replaces the fire. I don't know if so. I mean, if I can put this. Look at that, boys. How's that? Saber Comet. Here we go. Let's hear a purr. He just popped the system. Activate. Systems green. That doesn't sound as good as the Saber Raven. I was going to say, my Raven's slightly different. That video will be coming out after this one, I think. Take a look at it. Let me know in, in chat if That's you... That's the EMP in, uh, variant the that you got with the Intel Optane. It's the this sound drive from ages better. ago that's been discontinued. Hmm. Ah, anyway. You are here to launch. We're here about to call into a bounty, but I want to check buddy? the top speed real quick. We'll, uh, we'll just... Give you your horn, I'm going to trim to 100% and just let it go without me doing any type of boosting. Feel free to go through the Saber Raven video. Good to see you, that seems about Good to see everybody to here. Thanks for joining me live tonight. Checking out the stats of the new Firebird tonight. 1,400. That's what I thought. 1,400 meters. Let's see if we can make ourselves black out. I don't think I blacked out in the Saber, but it was close. All right. Three, two, one. And uh, 1,400 meters a second is the is the speed, the top speed. And when I get done with this quantum, I'll show you what the SCM speed is. All right, here we come. We've got an atmospheric MRT going here. I'm gonna actually have to play damn dirty missile throwing ape, I guess, huh? Just spam the shit out of it, so. <laughs> what do we got here? I can see it from here. Let me, uh... Oh, come on. Oh, shit. Fucking head tracking. And I have mouse smoothing on, too, right now from... Oh, no target, motherfucker. Did I not target him? Oh, I'm an idiot. What's he doing? Have, that's the first time I've even, even done that. All right. <laughs> you know, going to our SCM nav mode here. Um, we've got a glaive, a gladius, a glaive, a gladius. All right, let's see what's up here. Shields back. 
Watching the new Firebird, Futz. Just checking it out here. Where'd the bounty go? Is the bounty dead? He's just picking on some NPCs that was, that trying it out. Bounty, was it? I was just curious. Okay, my shields are back up. I just gotta get some distance on. Oh, can I just do this? Go into QT mode. Shields are down. Gonna boost. Switch back to SCM missile mode. You're gonna run out fast. Back up in time with, with what you've got. We're gonna give more missiles. And do four of them. It's pretty much a run and gun. You know, here, here's the thing with this. Spam boat, run and gun. You're going to have to probably load this up quite a few times, uh, depending if you live that long. But it's kind of like a, a, a run and gun boat, spam boat. Uh, you probably are going to have good luck with it going air to ground. That's uh, just my opinion right now. I haven't tested that out. Stunner. That's what okay. I feel like as well. Let's do that again. Now I have quantum shields are down, so I'm vulnerable. Vulnerable. Surprised he's still alive. Yeah, switching, switching from quantum, then dropping the shields in your master modes. I've experimented with that playing on and off for the past week and a half. All right, we got seven more missiles it seems left. A, just the, the, the flight experience seems a little bit more, I don't know. It seems a bit shallow to me, just my first kind of vibe Throwing the missile it. when they come straight at me should not have been like a good hit. That thing does move though. He gone. Okay. Oh well, yeah. I mean, that's just boom, boom, and That's boom. how you do that. Let's see if the bounty actually completed. History. It really does feel like completed. that at times. Okay. Backspace. I didn't right. kill him though. Well, here we You're are right. on the moon of Magda, taking a look at the underbelly of the Saber Saber Firebird. So there's two missile racks under here. Right? I, I even saw a lot of questions on how to quantum because the the the, the step needed where you would push B and then you would hold B to, to quantum. It was funny because it's not that way anymore. You left click your mouse. Saw a lot of questions being thrown in there and just how to quantum around system. I was laughing because it essentially shows you. It tells you in the bottom right when, when you're in when you're in quantum. You know when you're. And each one of them it does has feel like that. Missiles. No man's sky. So you know what that means vibe. the flying at times. That means you can fire six of them at a time. Unfortunately, I already fired. Yeah, um, I think that's primarily what I'm going to say. This is four arcane. I could fire six of them at a time if I wanted to. So that's pretty cool. If I had to see what's something's actually under there. Um. Another thing I want to do actually real quick, I'm just going to land. Can I just say that, that this game is running so smooth right now? Can I just, can I just say that? See, I didn't uh, get I'm that gonna experience. I'm going to land here and I want to check the inventory. I was pretty choppy from time from on I'm my place. I'm wearing an undersuit. And suffocating. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what? Fuck it. Open storage. Yep, it's storage and it has an <laughs> infinite amount of micro SCU. Okay, sure, I'll take it. Whatever. Wait, is there a gun rack? Nope, I don't see a gun rack. The weapons are too far forward. You can survive here longer, huh? I noticed that earlier too. Yeah, so that I think that's everything really that there is to uh, to talk about on the first day of a uh, of this Saber Firebird mm. being flyable in the PTU PTU only. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sold on it. I'm not sold on it. Um, 
But yeah, so there we got the stats there. Uh, gotta thank Subliminal for that video. He was one of the very first uh, to get the first look at the Firebird. And, um, you know, I, I just thought, hey, let's check it out after we watch the Inside Star Citizen review just to see what we think. And uh, let's get to the After Dark version of Star Citizen, the party. If you're watching here on YouTube, thanks. Push a like, subscribe. In the description, you'll see links uh, to everything that you need, including Subliminal's channel, who's an awesome dude, friend of the channel. And um, thank you. you you're going to want to be here live because we have a whole after dark section where people are picking uh fun things to watch that are star citizen as well and we are having a whole e giveaway let me put